Greetings, brothers and sisters. It's your brother, Sonny Esperance, or as some of you may know me as the podcast man. Back again with another episode of the Death Right Podcast, where we have our sister that will be sharing her testimony on how God brought her out of the world and into his church. As always, those of you watching and listening, this podcast, the I Thrive Podcast, affiliates itself with one church and one church only. That is First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ with a leader, teacher, and guide is Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings. If you would love to be baptized right in the name of Jesus Christ, you can go on the truthofgod.com, click locations, and see what location is closest to you. And uh, you can contact the local secretary or the local minister of that location to set that baptism up. If you want to attend a First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ and you want to see for a location, same process, truthofgod.com, click locations and see what location is closest to you. And you can, you know, whatever is more convenient so that way you may be able to go and attend service. As always, just never forget to keep the apostle and his family in prayer, as well as the faithful ministering brethren and their family as well. And let's not forget to keep one another in prayer as well, brothers and sisters, as you never know what one is going through. As you just seen in the previous testimony, glory be to God. It, it just, you never know what somebody is going through. You never know what a sister or a brother or anyone is going through. So let's never forget to keep one another in prayer that we may continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Before we get to our uh, sister that will be giving her testimony, um, this is just a brief, uh, not announcement to say, but those of you who want to come and testify, this podcast is only getting testimonies of brothers and sisters in the truth of God. Not where, hey, I just watch Pastor Gino Jennings and, you know, you're in this way of holiness. Um, It's not just a generalized a platform where I'm going to get testimony from left and right here. You are an apostolic Baptist, whatever it's no. So please, if you're coming, if you're messaging me, emailing or whatever, just make sure you are in this way, in the truth of God, plain and simple. I'm not taking you. You may have had a dream. You may have had a, whatever the case may be, or you may have an apostle, something like that, whatever the case, this podcast i thrive podcast will only by god's permission now will only be getting testimonies of brothers and sisters in the way of holiness in the truth of god first church of our lord jesus christ and those that just came in you know some of you take your time to really get the teachings in you because you may still have um that stuff from your past that you're going to bring in, you know, I don't want to um, waste no one's time and I don't want no one to waste Brother Sandin's time. This is just going to be it. It's not going to, it's not going to change once again, by God's permission. So if you would love to share your testimony on the I Thrive podcast, it's, it's within God's church. And as the apostle has taught, God only has one church. So don't, don't, don't try. It's, it's going to be a no every time. Every, every single time, every single time, every single time it's going to be no. You understand? Just make sure you're rooted and grounded in this way. You understand? I hope you do. Now. That's all. <clears throat> Stay tuned for updates. Don't forget, brothers and sisters, to keep me and my family in prayer as uh, uh, I do the same for you all. Now, we'll be having our sister. In fact, this sister coming on, she's the sister that has been uh, um, within the, the sister Colleen that came in the previous testimony. It's the sister that has been. This is the sister Prudence that you've been <laughs> hearing. You know, it's sister Colleen. Sister Prudence. We have Jam we have Jamia Carborn, team in Island Living. In the Zoom platform today. How are you doing this morning, sis? I'm doing fine. Wonderful. I'm wonderful. doing fine. I'm grateful to wonderful. be alive. I'm grateful to be able to be on this platform to give my testimony. Wonderful. And it's really an opportunity that I don't deserve. But I thank God for making it possible for me to be here. I could have been cut off. And it's only because of God's mercy I'm here. In this truth, 
and it's really something that I appreciate. I don't take it lightly. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're glad to have you, sis. And, you know, as I say, moreover, this platform, I don't even deserve myself to even just be getting testimonies of saints. This I try podcast is not about Brother Sandin. It's about God. And it's about how he's constantly taking those out of the world and into his church. But that would be enough for me, sister. Prudence. We're going to be getting your testimony now, sis, on how God brought you out of the world and into his church. So tell us, sis, how did God bring you out of the world? and into his church. Give us a background, of course, you know, all that stuff. Yes. Okay, I'm from a religious background. Um, I was born in a stable family. I have six siblings. Um, my father was a pastor, and my mom had the title as a missionary. And they, had, they have seven kids, seven children. I'm the fifth of the seven. So I have two older brother, two older sister, myself, and then I have a brother and a sister that follow behind me. So basically I was raised in an environment that had plenty of discipline, plenty the fear of God, do's and the don'ts, very restricted. And um, at some point, my family became um, divided. We are my Mother and my father separated. But when my mother and father separated, my mother still sent us to a church that was in the community. But for me, it was not the same like my father's church because I admire my father. He was like a great man of God in my sight, you know. So somewhere along the line, when I probably were like 15 or 16, we normally go to visit my dad's church on this every so-called Christmas Sunday. So I remember this specific Sunday, me and my brother visit my dad's church, and I ended up baptized in my dad's church. And then after that, I was the only child in the family that keep attending my dad's church. And I was there attending my dad's church for a while, until my dad um, get a church closer in the community where I was. And then I started to see some things um, that my dad was doing that I wasn't pleased with. And the, the church was being divided. And I decided that I'm going to leave to go to another church with the other bridging. Some of the saints that was leaving so I remember my father said to me, go on with the wicked, you know, I'm a Jamaican. So <laughs> when I was leaving the church with the saints that was leaving because I wasn't pleased with what my father was doing because even though I was young, I had knowledge enough to know that mm -hmm. some things wasn't acceptable where mm -hmm. it come to church. Right, right. So I was, so I decided to go to join another church with some of the saints that was leaving. And my dad said to me, go on with the wicked. <laughs> I, I never forget that. And, you know, I never raised to disrespect my dad or anything mm -hmm. like that. A matter of fact, I fear my dad. So mm -hmm. I did not reply. I just take my time and I leave. And then, you know, from then I've been church up, been going to church, going to church, but not finding what I was looking for. Because somewhere... When I'm in the environment of church, there's like, I have an antenna that would just go up and like I was just searching. Not even know what I'm looking for, but I wasn't feeling that comfort that I was where I, want I should be. So eventually I went back in the world, party, have friends doing all I can do. And then I remember after I get my first son, and I think after I get my second son, we were still searching for church because I had loved church. I really had that love for church. And even though I was in the world, I knew I wasn't where I wanted to be. But I always been praying to God, you know, not knowing the oneness of God or whatever, but whatever knowledge I know, I would pray to the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, and God will always answer my prayer, even in my ears, not really in truth. 
I would pray and, and I have evidence that there is a God because he always answering my prayer, always doing things for me and helping me out of my situation. So when I have my kids now, I start to search. I go Sabbath church, um, Jehovah Witness, just searching, me and my kids searching. And even my son, he developed a love for church because we always going to some church. Mm. And eventually, I get tired of searching and I, con I decided to continue the work because I say, you know, I'm not feeling this church vibes at all. So, you know, I became a party icon in entertainment, coordinating dance parties, entertainment, you know. And I remember, you know, I think 2002, I always come to the Cayman Islands because after my parents' separation, my mom migrated to the Cayman Islands. That's where she was able to maintain us and do certain things for us. And gradually we will visit her like holiday and certain times of the year will come. But um, in 2002, I gained my first employment in the Cayman Islands and a cosmetologist, um, work permit because I I love the fashion and the beauty. So I was in the beauty industry where I do the hairdressing, nails technician, all those works of beauty, um, pageant and all those style. So when I come to the Cayman Islands now, you know, still party life, clubbing, whatever, whatever. And that's where I met Sister Carly now. I call her Stacy. Oh. So that's where we get our little crew. It was like five of us. It was me, Sister Stacy, another um, girl by the name of Doreen and Nadette. My sister came along after. <laughs> so it was four of us that was a group that used to party and have fun, hang out, all these things. So I remember... Um, I was in the world partying and everything like that. And I had a I had a boyfriend here in the Cayman Islands. And that was around um I think about 2004, before Ivan. I was involved with somebody at that time. And I remember we just partying, partying, partying. And one Thursday night, I came from work. I used to have two jobs because I used to do the salon in the day and then I have a dishwashing job in the night. And I remember I came from the salon and I don't think I had the dishwashing job that night. The dishwashing job was like on the weekends. And when I came, I just feel this sadness. And this, I just feel this, like feel so heavy. A sadness, you know, a burden was on me. I felt like a burden was on me. And I went in my room from work and and I lied down in my bed. And, you know, I was just thinking within myself. You know, like a thought came in my head like, you think this could be all in the world? You think the world could go on like this forever and do all that again? And when the thought came in my head, I started to think about it. And you know what? I started to, like, like I was reasoning with myself and answering myself. And I said, but well, this would have made no sense if the world would just go on like this and we don't have nothing to look forward to. It would make no sense. It would be better I did a bomb. Because if the world could just go on like this, like a circle and never end, everybody do what they want to do, killing, murdering, and at the end of the day, people just die and that's it. I said, this would make no sense. You know, and while I was there thinking to myself, reasoning with myself, um, you know, other things came to my mind, but I don't remember the other things that I was at that time, because that was like 2004. And then I remember the Friday night, after I came from work, the Friday night, I felt so burdened and stressful that I did not go to 
work day. I did not go to my other job the Friday night I call you. And I was just there, just feeling depressed, down, sad, confused, and all type of things. And I remember the Friday night, my life started reflect, like, oh, I go to the club, and oh, you know, oh, I be coming home at night, oh, my boyfriend be junk, and you know, like the, the Lord was like showing me my lifestyle and said, this is what you've been doing. And like, how much nights I bring you home safe when a junkie man is bringing you home and I kept you on the road and direct you home. And he showed me all the danger, such things. And then like the voice were warning me and said, if you go back, if you go back, remember, if you go back, you know, and I don't remember, but I know there was a warning. And at that time, I was the leader of the group, you know, the party icon. So <laughs> normally we would sleep. We would come home and rest. And then like midnight, 12 o'clock, like 11 to 12, because, you know, they say 12 o'clock is when the party starts. So we normally would start, get dressed. And about in the 12 o'clock hours, we call up everybody. And up oh, now, we're getting ready and our clothes go out of a ride, come and we just gone. You know, but not, that night, now everybody was waiting. I said, oh my God, how am I going to tell them that I'm not going tonight? I'm going to disappoint them. Because mm -hmm. like, if I'm not going, nobody wants to go. I'm like, oh my God, I can't tell them that I'm thinking about church, all these things. And I said, you know, I was just there, but I was convinced that God was giving me a warning and I said, I'm not going. So I said, Lord, help me to tell them I'm not going. So when I think um, one of them called me, I don't remember exactly which one, and I said, um, I don't feel good tonight, you know, I don't feel like I'm going out. I don't feel good tonight. And on the other end, she said to me, you know, I feel the same way. I don't feel like I want to go out tonight. And I was happy when she said that. And I said, I got that man. you know, I did not go out that night. And the Saturday night I come home from work again. Before I went in my room, I could felt like a present was in my room. You know, like somebody was there waiting on me. And I got a fear came over me. And I was there in the living room and I said, I have to go in my room. And I went in my room. And when I went in my room, it was a different atmosphere. I could feel the present like somebody was there and it's like the same present that was there from the friday night was still there saturday night and i said no man and i went in and i lie down on the bed and i remember lying down on the bed and i started to pray i started to pray and i started to read my bible i was reading in saint matthew i never forget and after I pray and pray, I feel a re refreshment. I feel a release. And I start to read St. Matthew. And I remember the Saturday night. Sorry, I'm getting a call. You're good. I still see you. You can see it. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and I remember this Saturday night. I, after I prayed and I read, I read St. Matthew. Oops. Yeah, I prayed and I read St. Matthew. And after I read St. Matthew, I started to cry because I read this chapter where I read the chapter where when they crucify Jesus and I felt so emotional. I felt so bad and I was just crying and praying, crying and praying and repenting and just say, Lord, I'm going to serve you, just giving God my all, repenting and everything. But then I wasn't going to any church. So that was the next step. I know what I need to do, go to a church, be baptized, whatever. So at that time, my employer was, was um, that I was working with, she 
in their term was a Christian. So I remember now this Sunday, I woke up this Sunday morning, my life was happy, singing Christian music and have a normal family day. And but I remember in the evening, all my family, because my, most of my siblings was here in the Cayman Islands and we live in a big house, plenty friends on Sunday, all of us would be busy with people coming by. My mom, they used to play the ludi games and stuff like that. So it's like big entertainment. And I remember I was in my room and I came out to get something. But when I was going back in my room, when I reached in my room, it's like someone was just there, you know? And I went in the room and then some, someone was just there in the room and I, I run out. I remember run out and I borrowed my mom's phone and I called. You know, the presence of the Lord was so strong in the room that I got fear, I run out, and I call my boss, which she was like my boss and my friend. And I remember I said to her, Erica, Erica, God is calling me, God is calling me because I was so frightened. I was so afraid. I said, God is calling me, God is calling me. And she said to me, if God calling you, why are you calling me? Answer. <laughs> so she hung up the phone and I was like, I thought this girl would be praying with me on the phone. I, I, this girl was like, is God calling you? Why are you calling me? Answer. And she hung up the phone. So I went in the room and I started to pray, start to pray and submit myself because the presence of the Lord was so strong and it had me so afraid. And I remember I prayed and I repent that night. And then after that, when I go to work the Monday morning, she said, um, explain to me what you mean God is calling you. And I started to tell her my experience from Friday night. And she started to say, I've been praying for you. I've been praying for you that God will touch you and whatever, whatever. So she said, she invited me to church with her. And we went to church with her. I think it was the Sunday. And she shared my testimony with some of her great church people, and they asked me if I want to get baptized. And I remember that I said, yes, I want to get baptized. They scheduled a date for my baptism, and I told them that my kids were coming because I had two children now back in Jamaica, I have two boys. So when my kids came, they, we planned to get baptized. My kids came the Friday, and I got baptized this Sunday. After I get baptized this Sunday now, from them time I've been just praying, reading my Bible, crying, crying all the time because, you know, I just felt this connection with God and I always felt like I want to be close. We just crying, repenting, and I was just going through the motion. I remember this specific night now. I start to watch this TBN channel all the time. Because, you know, you're changing and you want to do the Christian thing. So I started to watch the TBN channel with Benny and all of them. I remember watching the TBN channel. And I remember one night I was reading the Bible because I've always been reading the St. Matthew, St. Matthew. And the crucifixion, what reflect what Jesus went through for our sin and everything. And when I was reading it, it's like I was actually witnessing the crucifixion, what was happening. And it made me so sorrowful and I remember I was crying one night and just praying telling God how I love him how I want to be with him and I remember what he was saying to him Lord I know the flesh is filthy and the flesh cannot be where you are so if, if you have to take me out of my flesh I want to be with you even take me out of the flesh I will pray like that and I pray and cry until I fall I fell, fell asleep and I remember um, I dreamt like a bright light, but it was like the, the light, the figure were coming out of the TV because I fell asleep with the TV on, on the TV channel. And a bright light, my room was filled with, with light, a bright light came out of the television. And at that point I was conscious because when the light came, it, I felt the heat like the sun. It was hot. It was like the sun was coming closer and closer. And I could feel this heat. 
And I have the, I was conscious to what was happening because I thought to myself, I remember my kids were sleeping beside me. And I was saying to myself, wondering if they are feeling this heat that I'm feeling. And at that time, I felt a peace. I felt a peace I never felt in my life. I felt a peace like, like I was in a different world. And when I looked, I saw an image like an angel clothed in a gown with a slush across here. But I could not see the face because the light was so bright. I could only see to the stomach. And it, the image was standing right in front of the TV. I would say like, no, I know better, but to me, it would be like it came out of the TV. And I was just there looking and I felt so good until gradually the light started to disappear. It started to go gradually. And I remember I started to cry and say, no, no, don't go, don't go, come back, come back. And I heard the voice said, you know what to do. And it left. And immediately I know that if I start to serve God, do the right thing, that light will come back. And I never forget that peace that I felt. And that peace that I felt, let me realize, when I was going to church to church, that was what I was looking for. I go to church to church, but I did not know what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't feeling something that I was expect to feel. So that night I realized that was what I was looking for. That peace, that comfort, that contentment, that was what I was looking for. And after that, Hurricane Ivan came, whatever, whatever, I prayed to the Lord. The Lord would show me things that would happen. The Lord would show me things that would happen. I remember one day I tell my mommy, pray for my son, pray for your son. That was my younger brother because he is go he's going to jail. Pray for him. And my brother went to jail in Jamaica, spent 10 days. I remember a lot of events that what would happen that God would show me and it would happen exactly, but it was mostly in my family. Things that would happen in my family. And I remember one event where the first hurricane threatened to come. And because the Cayman Islands is a small country with no ill surrounded by water, everybody always say, if hurricane coming, they're gone. And I remember the hurricane threatened to come and I prayed and I said, Lord, don't let the hurricane come because my kids are here because I got a dream that the hurricane came and I have my kids and it was all water all over in my house. And I woke up from the dream and I pray and I said, Lord, don't let the hurricane come. Please don't let the hurricane come until my kids go back home. That, after that, the hurricane passed, it didn't come. Thank God. My kids migrated Wednesday back to Jamaica. And then we were threatened by Hurricane Ivan. I went back and I prayed. I said, Lord, don't let this hurricane come. While I was praying, the Lord showed me like in a vision, like it was an army, a great army, getting ready, preparing like they're going for war. But it was like the ancient days thing that we would see, or the, the kings there would put on the thing on their foot. You know, and they were getting ready. And I said, I get up. Because I used to have this. I, I still do this practice. When I pray, like if I pray for half hour, I would meditate for half hour. Because I always said, if I talk to God, I'd give him time to talk back to me. So I would just meditate and be listening. And it, it would be in the meditation that those moments that I would get these vision. And I saw a whole army were getting ready like we were preparing for war. And while I was getting the, getting the vision, I could get the understanding of what, what it meant. And I remember saying to my family, 
the hurricane is coming, you know, this one is coming. And the Lord will protect us. The Lord show me an army getting ready. And I said, this hurricane is coming, but the Lord will protect us. And the hurricane did came, and our house were protected. No water in our house. I remember when I got in my room, um, it was a three-bedroom house. My mom window was damaged, and another, the, the other lady window was damaged. But my room, not a drip of water. Oh, and I remember me and my friends slept in my room. And after Hurricane Ivan, no, my employer, she migrated and went away. It was category five hurricane with tornado. The place were ruined. The place were ruined. Big ship, cars, ship, like lift up, throw away, cars were packed up. It was bad. It was very bad. I remember I was so traumatized when I see how far the water came. You know, but the Cayman Islands is a place like this. The, the government emphasize on safety and security. So while the hurricane were threatening to come, the, the police forcefully evacuate people from their home. Hmm. So we were in a shelter. And I remember while we were in the shelter after the hurricane, the hurricane was so long, it was like it would never end. And I remember I was just in the shelter praying, singing, you know, having a good time. And after the hurricane, we sent out my brother because plenty of people could not leave the shelter because their home was gone. So we sent out my brother like a dove, like the dove out of the ark, to go and look if the house is there because we don't want to give up our space and then there's no home and we have to go back. So my brother came, went, look at and went and looked, came back and tell us that, oh, so it's good, no damage, whatever. Wow. So we leave and we went home. And I remember at that time, my friend, I have a friend, she was raising the Catholic. Her name is Nabit. She was one of the four. And every Sunday, she, no matter which, party Friday and Saturday night. If we even come in five o'clock in the morning, by 10 o'clock you will see that girl with our Bible passing going to church. <laughs> <laughs> and we always because she lived behind us and she had to pass our house. And me, me and my mommy, we always be laughing at her and said, not it going to church. So and even when we're going to come, she always be praying, she have her Bible all the time. She mm -hmm. be Religious. Really so after Ivan now, I was baptized now because I have a meeting with my with the person I was with at the time to let him know that the Lord is calling me. I choose to go with the Lord. So he said he's not gonna confuse me. He backed off. And then all of my other when I get baptized now, everybody were like their all mentality changed. Mm -hmm. So I remember now she was going to church and I decided to go to church with her because at that time, the church I was baptizing, I had no right to go to church. My coworker, my employer leave the island. So I started going to the New Testament church with Nadit. And I remember I go to New Testament church with Nadit. But in the house, I remember I'd be having like anointing on me, like just worshiping all the time. And I'd be like singing. And I remember like at one point from the night when I have the encounter where I told you I saw that vision of the, of the image of the angel. I start to have this stomach lips, stomach lips and I was like, but I didn't know much about the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. or anything like that, but I know when I was, I was just figuring, like, say, when I get emotional, I get that type of feeling where my lip would be like, can't talk what I want to say. But it was when I go to church that we not it now, that I was in the church worshiping. And I felt that 
power come over me where I couldn't talk, what talk. And I start to be, I know I remember I make a sound like, ah. And then after that, I was just speaking, speaking, speaking like that's when I, I could not say what I want to say. I would just be saying, and that's when they told me that I feel with the Holy Ghost. And after that, um, after that experience where they say I feel with the Holy Ghost, all of my colleagues start to come to church now. Stacy, mm. Doreen, mm. the whole crew mm. start to go to church. <laughs> and then the whole crew baptized. Mm. Wonderful. So all of us was now church people from, from the club to the church. And I remember my sister was close to Nadit. My sister that I follow, she was close to Nadit. So she said she coming when Nadit, Nadit was the one that go to church first. All the time she was the one be going to church, but she was the last one to decide to get baptized. So when she decided to get baptized, my sister said she wanted to come and witness her baptism. When my sister came to witness her baptism, my sister ended up baptized. So now that's how it become right. five of us. <laughs> so by going to the church and they said, I feel with the Holy Ghost now. They, when they see the young people coming me, like me and my sister and the crew, they put on this thing, you know, they call it the tarrying service. So they announced that they're going to have a tarrying service because of this feeling with the Holy Ghost. That is after my experience that I feel with the Holy Ghost. They decided they're going to have a tarrying service. So all of my sister and everybody go. I still go to the tarrying service. I still go down on money because I didn't have the knowledge to know. You feel already. You didn't know to do all these rituals they're going to do. So I was there again on money with the they put the pillar at the altar and you kneel down and they said to say hallelujah, hallelujah, whatever, whatever. And they, they all took drama, you know, mm -hmm. the tourist service drama. Mm -hmm. And then while I was there, I was already feel so of course I started to speak in tongues because I was already speak. They declared me feel again. <laughs> <laughs> so when the service over, I don't remember anybody else will feel or anything like that. When this, they said they're going to have a whole week of the starting service because they want people to feel with the Holy Ghost because by, by going there and speaking in tongues and they say I feel with the Holy Ghost, they want everybody to feel with the Holy Ghost. So they're going to have one week of the starting service, I remember. And I think we went a couple nights. And I remember every night I go and be speaking in tongues. So I remember when we came, when we come home, my mom, my mom came with us. She wasn't really the church type because I say, because of her experience with church, she declared herself that she never going to go to church no more. Because she actually, like, in her ignorance, blaming God for the way her marriage ended up. All these church things that she would say, oh, she go to church, sacrifice, and this is what happened, and this is what happened. So she had a resentment regarding church but because we were going to church i remember i don't remember she ended up coming with us that night eventually she come with us but probably that night was that we came home my sister that i followed she was crying crying because she did not get the holy spirit she was crying and i remember my mommy saying to her then don't cry don't cry with joy you will draw water from the well. You don't need to cry. Just seek the Lord and with joy, you will draw water from the well. And I think it was the following night, we go back to the tarrying service. My sister got filled with the Holy Ghost. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> and eventually, I think eventually three or four oh. out of the five were filled with the Holy Ghost. Me, my sister then and the, the first girl, the cat, the one that always got to church, not it. Three of us were filled with the Holy Ghost. But I was going to sorry. I was going to church to their church at the New Testament church. They did not consider me a member because I was baptized in the church. 
So at one point, they said they're doing this right on a fellowship. But I decided I'm not going to take no right on a fellowship. Because even though I was going to the church, I was still not comfortable in the church. One, it was two pastors, a man and, and his wife. I, the woman, the woman would, would be so partial against me that my sister and the rest, she would pay attention to them, but me, she would treat like a castaway. She didn't take up my time and I didn't take up her time either. I just go to church, serve God, focus on church, when church, I gone. I didn't really too much of this. So they didn't put me on the choir. They didn't let me do anything. At one point, they said they're going to have right on a fellowship. And when I decided I'm not taking the right on a fellowship, that was, she, she, she didn't take up my time one bit. And I didn't take up her time, but she was all up. My sister and her used to be this, mm -hmm. close. They used to say my sister like an armor bearer. She would be taking my sister to the Cayman Rock and all over. But me, she only would say praise the Lord to me. She did take up my time one bit. And me, I did take up her time either. So going to the church, going to the church, and then in after Ivan, the country became so difficult that Employment was down. Um, the living, everything were like just, I decided I'm going back to Jamaica. So I went back to Jamaica. And I remember when I said I was going back to Jamaica, plenty, like my family would be like, why are you going back to Jamaica? Ray, 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 Ray. But you know what? I, I had faith. One thing about me, I had faith. I always, I'm a person that I go with faith. I trust God, I believe that. And I remember telling them the same God in Cayman is the same God in Jamaica. And if the God that provides for me in Cayman that I serve cannot provide for me in Jamaica, I'm not going to serve him no more. So I might go back to Jamaica because after the country lockdown and everything, I decided to seek a new career. Mm. And I decide I wasn't interested in the hairdressing no more. So I decided to go in the nursing field. So I decided to go back to Jamaica to pursue nursing course. God was so good that it was like the Holy Spirit leading me to go back to Jamaica. By me going back to Jamaica, I saved my son life. Because I remember when I go back to Jamaica, my son said his stomach were hurting him. And all night I did not sleep. Early in the morning, I took him, say, I'm going to the hospital. When I go to the hospital, um, my son diagnosed with asthma. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if my son had asthma, but being that he had cold and he was being treated and we, are, we have asthma in our family, so it was easy for him to lead up to asthma. And I remember when I was in the hospital, I said to my son, the asthma was so bad that they decided they're going to keep him and let him and admit him because it was, it's like they're giving him the nebulizer, but it wasn't helping. And I remember I said to my son, um, as I was com comforting him, I think he was probably like seven, eight or somewhere there. And I remember I was comforting him and I was saying, um, the, the doctor is going to keep you here because they don't want to send you home and anything bad happened to you. So the doctor is going to keep you here. But the doctor decides that he's going to give you three more nebulizers. And if you don't calm down, he will have to send you back. He will have to keep you here and you can't go. And I remember my son saying to me, no, mommy, because I always pray and my children, I teach them to pray. He said, no, mommy, I'm not going to admit. I prayed. And I'm going home with you. They won't admit me. I'm going to calm down now. And when the doctor called that little boy name, and we went back to the doctor because, you know, they sent us for the treatment. Then we go back to see the doctor. When the doctor told me I can't bring home this little boy, I was surprised. I was like, I didn't even want to bring him home because I was like, he don't look better to me. Mm -hmm. But he said he prayed, so I take him home. And, you know, from there, I was in Jamaica. 
going on, going on, trying to find church, church happening again, can't find a comfortable church. And I remember my aunt leave me, my aunt called me. One minute, one minute. Yeah. Yes, so my aunt called me and told me that she was going to go back to England. So she said she had a position in the church as a Sunday school secretary. And I think I was visiting church with her for a while. And then she decided that they, she wanted to leave me in her position in the church as a Sunday school secretary, Sunday school teacher and some secretary too. And she, you know, the pastor and everybody agree and I got that little position in the church. So I started to work with the kids and going to that church you now and, you know, worship, everything. They had a prophet name that they call Prophet White that would come from time to time. Same like our pastor would visit. That's how he would visit. He's an African. He's from Africa, from Nigeria. And he would come. When he come, they would pitch big tent like when pastor come. And they would go there and um, people go there and he'd be, people join the line and he'd be reading up people, telling people things and all these things. And I remember when I went up in the line before Prophet White, and he was there and he could not tell me nothing. And my aunt, them were, were like saying, like everybody was saying, everything you tell them is truth and stuff. But when I go up to him, he could not tell me anything. Only thing he do, he, 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 he give me a song and said I should sing one song. But he could not tell me nothing. And I was saying, but oh, this man, he see everybody else, so he couldn't see nothing about me. Mm. But he could not tell me anything. I was disappointed. <laughs> However, he taught me a song. And I always would sing that song, see that song. And after everything, he, he went back. And I officially was a part of the church you now, teaching the Sunday school and have Sunday school choir and everything. But for some reason, I wasn't a church favorite. Every church I go, I wasn't a church favorite because they always say, most of my acquaintance are people that I would communicate with in church, I would say, become close to, they would see me as too holy too righteous <laughs> because I just wanted to be right. I want God to please and I, I could not, I just can't believe the hypocrisy. So most of the time they would just stay far from me. I don't have much church friend or acquaintance because they always say she over righteous, she too holy, Miss Perfect, you know, things like that. So I always been in my own corner. And I remember after my aunt migrated, she gave us a business opportunity. We were running a grocery shop by her house. We were staying at her house now, closer to the church. So I would be the one cleaning the church, doing all these things, taking care of the Sunday school children and everything. But this lady that used to be friend with my aunt, she claimed that my aunt told her that she would give her the position that she gave me. So from that moment, she always on the phone calling my aunt, telling my aunt news, telling lies and causing confusion. So it reached a point now where I said, you know what, I get fed up. And this lady was a member of the church as well. I said, so I remember I get fed up. I said, you know what, my aunt would sometimes like she believe what she's saying and I'd be like explaining. And it's like my aunt would believe what she's saying. So I said, you know what, my mom know was one of them. She, she don't play when it comes to her children, you know, my mother. Because she married when she was 19 and get her seven children. She don't play with her children. So my mom called and said, I need to pack up, leave that lady house. Because my aunt ended up calling my mommy and we're discussing something. My mom get, get upset and said, I leave my children at my place. You're the one that go there and put them to your place. I know you're calling me to complain about that. And when you were when you were asking them to stay at your place, you did not call me and get my permission. So my mother said, I'm gonna tell them to leave your place and go back home. So 
my mom called me and tell me that. So I saw the lady now. And I, I remember I said to the lady, um, she named Sister Michelle. I said, Sister Michelle, I'm going to give, I talked to my aunt and I told her I'm going to give you this key because I'm going back to my home because I can't take the confusion. And I remember I saying to her, but I saying to her, you see this stream of dirty and clean water, God is going to mash it up. I said, the pipe that flow, the dirty water, and same pipe that flow, the clean water, God is going to mash up that pipe. I said, you go to church and you worshiping God with that same mouth and use that same mouth to call my auntie to tell lie and make mischief. God is going to mash up that, that stream. And, oh my God, I cried because I feel so bad because I don't like people to lie. I'm, listen to me. One thing could make me angry. I'm always a bold person. And I'm brave enough. So I believe that is coward that tell lie. Because if I'm going to lie to you, that means I fear you. So that was just me saying, I don't like people to tell lie on me. I'd rather to talk the truth and bear the consequence. Because I used to believe that I can defend myself. If I tell you the truth and you want to do something, I will defend myself about, against the truth, that. So when I see this woman, I mean, I cry, man. And I love the children. I love the church. I was already attached. And I said, I'm going to leave. And I remember Prophet White came again. Um, that woman ended up meeting an accident. And mash up her mouth. Hmm. So the whole village and people say, I work for beyond the woman. <laughs> because I had told her publicly that the dirty and clean water got her mash up. Hmm. So everybody starts saying, No. No, I'm in meeting because they say I work for beyond the lady. Hmm. So the lady, the lady, but at that point, the lady, at that point, me and my brother used to manage the business until me and my brother turned enemy. So my brother, we are like a compact family. And then me and my brother was enemy now because the brother and the woman were close. And then all of a sudden, my brother, we have conflict that I don't deal with my brother. And it reached the point where my mom and my other brother have to come to Jamaica to have a meeting to find out what was the problem between me and, me and my brother. Because we don't have conflict in my family. We are very close. We are known as the Taylor family. <laughs> very close. Mm. So at that point now, Prophet White came again and they bring the case before him as the powerful man of God saying that he must... They must let me top teach Sunday school or take away my position because I work in Obia. So they have this meeting and the whole church are defending lady. It was like just me. And of course, you know me, I got a little faithful sister. We are going to try stand by my side. So it was just me and Juliet. And Prophet White have the meeting. And when Prophet White have the meeting, this powerful man of God that we say, the powerful man of God, I was so disappointed. The man was telling me like, um, he saw when he when he look, like when he look around me, he can see darkness and he see blood and all this thing. And then like the man go and say, yes, I work for God. So I said, only thing I do read my Bible and pray. So if I work for God, is God is the other man, and if God work on my behalf, that's the same God who no worship him. And he said, no, this that 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 and real and certain sound. He said, turn the Psalms in the Bible, you must not read because that, 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 whatever. So I was so disappointed that after the meeting, I went to church in the evening. And when I sit down and really see, I was angry because I blamed God because I was saying God was the one that don't show the prophet the truth. So I was angry and I said, he cannot see it if God don't show him. So I take up my Bible and went home and decided I'm not going back to, to church. When I was home, I remember the following day, Prophet White called me and said, Sister Prudence, why are you angry? 
I said, Prophet, why I'm not angry? I'm disappointed. Because you said you're a powerful man of God and we went in judgment and you accused me of something that I know I did not do. And all of you joined together that I were probably on this sister and I know I did not do that. So how oh, I gotta come to church and worship when not even my God can defend me, you know? Mm -hmm. And he tell me that same song to sing. It was a song that he said, if I want God to manifest it for, I must sing this song. You are the Lord, let your name be glorified. And he teach me that little African song. And you know, I was there upset, praying to God. And you know, the Holy Spirit and the anointing came upon me. And the thought came to my head like, like Lord, like the Spirit were rebuking me and said, Who are you? Who are you that nobody should tell lie on? Who are you? And you know, like it, 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 the Spirit were like rebuking me and said, Joseph was innocent. And I sent him to prison. So who are you? You know? And I start to repent. As Lord, forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, because at that time, because of the Lord was dealing with me, it's like everything the Lord was to do according to what I want, you know? And the Lord rebuked me and I have to repent and said, who am I? Oh my God, I never see that point where sometimes things happen for God, glory. Or don't, I did not have that knowledge. So when he said, Joseph was innocent and still go to prison, I repent and everything. And I remember the other night I was home and Sister Juliet called me and said, Sister Prudence, Sister Prudence, you should come to church tonight. You should come to church tonight because the Holy Spirit come up on Prophet White and Sister Michelle confessed everything. Sister Michelle confessed everything that she was the one working the other and you. She was the one doing this. She was the one doing that. She was the one let your brother and you went in problem that the chop to mash up the business and whatever. And that same time, my sister Ven was home and my brother was lying in the bed. And my brother get up that morning and said he literally felt something get up and walk. Like he literally felt like somebody was in him and the thing just get up and walk out. Because I tell you, my, my brother, personality change. My brother, attitude. My brother was just this angry, angry, angry person. Mm -hmm. And my brother don't have mm -hmm. that personality. He's one of the simple ones. I'm the one that always defend him. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I tell you that during that experience, my brother said that same time when she was confessing, that spirit just get up out of him. He just felt like something get up the walk. And... Prophet White call us and we went and he speak with us and tell us that God did not show him and this and that, whatever, whatever, and said, you should forgive the lady and whatever, whatever. But after that, I still did not attend back to church. I went back home and I was just home trying to find a church again. Could not find a church. So I decided that I'm going to leave. Because, because after that experience with God, I knew what I was looking for and I could not find that peace, that contentment, that happiness, that joy, I could not find it. So I get this and I said to the Lord, I'm going back in the world. If I remember the last church I went was a church called the Open Bible Church. And I said, God, if this is what church is, I don't want to be a part of it. And I don't want to serve you if this is the service that you want. I'd rather go back in the world. And from then, I start link up with my senior friends, going back in the world. But God has never leave me. God has never leave me. I have some of the strangest experience when I went back in the world. I remember my friend invited me to this party, this dance in Kingston, and we went. It was one of her friends having the the having a party, a dance. In Jamaica, we call, we call it dance in Jamaica. People call it party. And when I went, after everything, we had to sleep over because we were far from where we were living. And they had us and everything, and we were sleeping. And while I was sleeping, I was getting a dream that two men, three men came in, in the place that we were, had to rob the place. And I remember like 
in my vision, two of them were alive, but one was a spirit, one was dead. But like he was dead and he was a spirit, but he was with them. And right after the clubbing, and I was just sleeping, tired, party, everything. And I was just there sleeping, dreaming, speaking in tongues, rebuking the spirit. Just, I don't mean, all of a sudden, we get up in the morning and I was telling them what I dreamt. And everybody was sharing their experience in the room. And I tell her, like, out of six of us, all of us were backsliders, you know. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Im immediately, everybody started to sing, pray. And we was just talking about that exalting God. And I remember my friend that took me there. I said to her, um, I'm leaving, you know. I'm leaving. Because this was a week, a, a weekly thing that this person had. And she said she wanted to stay because the other week they got have something else. And I said, you know what? I'm leaving. I said, based on this, because of this dream that I get and I'm staying. And you know, my friend was telling me to wait until like another day, like Wednesday. I said, no, man, I'll leave it today. I'm a person like this, and I'm determined. You know, if I say I'm doing something, I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. And they had did something that upset me. I'm the like, type of person. My, I, I used to be like aggressive, ignorant. So you see, when I get upset, I go on, you know, I go on. So something they did, like somebody money was missing. Somebody steal somebody money, and they were saying like, everybody must put together, give back this person. And I didn't like what was going on, so I said, I'm leaving. So vexation now, get the best of me and I leave. And the following week, my friend called me and told me that, I think I saw her, she had ear like mine locks, but when I saw her, she cut off all her ear, her ear was sharp. And I was like, oh, you cut off your ear and stuff. And she was saying to me, Prudence, you didn't know I got, I got raped. And I said, get raped, what happened? She said, you remember, you said you get that dream and you leave and I didn't leave. Two men came in and they raped her and they raped another girl. And I was like, oh my God. And in myself, I was just saying, thank God I leave. Thank God I leave. You know, and mind you, have, you were in a backsliding state during that time. I was in a backsliding state and they were a backslider as well. Because when the Holy Ghost came upon me that night and I was speaking in tongues, because as I said in my vision, two of the guys were living while one were dead. Mm. So I guess um, I was just rebuking. I was just speaking in tongues and, you know. And that's when I said, God, thank you, Lord Jesus. So... I be always like see things and it happen like that. So I really thank God. It's just no, I look back and I appreciate these things that I went through, that God kept me because he know that he was going to bring me here in the truth. And he was just, he was just bringing me through the process of process. And I always say, why you take so long to bring me the truth? But then I get to understand you want me to appreciate where I am. If he had just jumped into truth, maybe I would not be striving the way I'm striving or appreciating it the way I do, you know? So after that episode now, I remember, I don't want to be too long, so I just going to summarize this little test, this little part. No, you're good, you're good. I, I remember <laughs> I was in Montego Bay again, partying, mm. and... I was kidnapped. And I was kidnapped. And when I was kidnapped, the vehicle was driving from Montego Bay, just driving, driving, driving. Didn't even know where I was going. And by the time I realized that I was really kidnapped, that I was kidnapped because I was supposed to go to a location in the vehicle, but I realized after a while when the, the person take me to the location I was supposed to go to, but when I was supposed to return, I realized that they were going else. He picked up another person, yeah. The driver take me where I want to go, then pick up another person, and then that person was acting as if he were like holding up the driver then. So that's when I realized that we are in trouble now, and he was just, I remember he had a knife 
pointing at the driver. And at that time, all I could see was my life reversing. I was just seeing like, from I was small in coming up all my life, it was like a replay of all my life. Like my life was going backward. But as I said, I'm a brave person, you know, <laughs> I don't really too timid like that. So anyway, the driver were there playing because in the event, it, it would be as if it's the driver disperses after. And while we were there now, the driver was there talking, talking, talking with him and talking with the person. So, so I remember they put a strap on my hand. He put a strap on my hand. You know one of them straps that you pull it, it can't go yes, back way? Yes, zip, uh, it's like they a zip, uh, zip, those yeah. zip ties, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember I was wearing a white shirt and a black bow because I used to be so... Um, sexist dressing <laughs> like that. <laughs> I, I used to take pride in myself so much. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I have it going. So I remember at that point they were there discussing, discussing, discussing. And all my mind was telling me, I'm going to escape. I'm going to escape. And I remember the guy come, this guy know of this knife and at some point, I would try to reason with him, tell him not to kill me, Ray, 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 Ray. And then this guy would tell me, um, I, I was, um, I was hired to kill you, and this and that and this and that, and were telling me, what, what can you do for me now? What can you do for me? Because like the other guy was telling him, like, uh, like the two of them was in this, but one of them were playing for me, and I was playing for myself. But every time this guy decides not to kill me, then he decides he's going to kill me. So I get fed up now. I say, you know what? <laughs> if he's going to kill me, let him kill me, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he was double-minded, double-minded in that situation. <laughs> One minute, he, he changed his mind. Asked of what we can have. Then another minute, he said, no, man, I have to I like, so I remember now. I say, you know what? Let me talk to God. Let him kill me because this must be the will of God. I said, Life, be life belongs to God. And if God wanted to kill me, he had to kill me. So I remember I prayed. I talked to God. I said, Lord, if everything that I did to this point, if I said, no, I remember I said, Lord, you know I love you. And I want to serve you. And I look for you everywhere and you hide from me and I can't find you. And now I'm in this world and this is what you're going to do. I know you're going to let somebody bring me in this bush to kill me, leave my two children there. I said, if this is the God that is, I don't want to serve you. And you're not a fear God and you're not a just God. I said, this is your life. I cannot keep it. Because if you want it, I know. When the time comes, you're going to take back your life. But if this, you can't let somebody bring me in the bush and kill me like this. I said, after how I cleaned the church, I did everything that I was doing for you. And you know why I'm out here because I searched for you everywhere. I could not find you nowhere. And this is the last thing I'm going to say to you. When you take your life, I don't want to come to heaven because I don't want to see you because you're not a fear God. You're not a just God. And I want to go to hell with the devil. And at that point, the only thing come, came to my mind was like, all I want to do, die quick. I don't want to feel no pain. And I was saying to myself, that knife looked dull enough. I hope they just slit my throat. At that point, the guy said, I must kneel down. Because he decided he's going to kill me now. So I, I kneel down and I was praying while I was kneeling down. And I said at this point, I said, Lord, only thing I want to do, die quick. I don't want to feel no pain. And I look at the knife and I close my eyes. I say, this knife looks dull. It actually even looks sharp <laughs> to me. And at that point, when I shut my eye, I was just waiting to feel my neck slip because I made up my mind, this is it. Mm. All I felt was the strap on my hand cut. And the guy said, get up. And he said, where do you want me to leave you? Because I don't want to bring you back 
to Magical Bay because people don't like the people, these people that, and he, I told him to bring me the closest point to Spanish Town or whatever. And I, I went back in the car and I even give, I even remember um, they drive on top of the gas station and I take out $500 out of my purse and give them to buy gas, to help buy the gas. And I remember one vice was saying to me, get out of the car, run, run, run. And life advice was saying to me, don't run, sit down, sit down. But advice was because we were at the gas station, now mm. it was like um, five or four in the morning, mm. between four to five in the morning. And one vice was saying, I should just open the door and run. But another vice said to me, sit down, don't run. Mm. And on the radio station, this Christian song started playing. And I just felt this present of a person. I felt comforted. And I remember they drive me to a, a runabout right there in Spanish town and he let me out. And then I, my friend was living close to that era. And I walked to my friend's house, that, the one that got raped. And I was telling her what was happening to me, what happened. Until I go home and I was telling my family and everybody what happened to me. And then I was just repenting, thanking God. But at that time, I did not realize the situation I was in. It was after that I was traumatized because it was after that that God allowed me to see what I was in. You know, so from that stage and that experience, I decided to come back to Cayman. Now, if somebody in Jamaica want me there, I decided to come back to Cayman. So I returned to Cayman and I started to work here. That's like 2000, and I came back like 2010, 2010 I came back. So while I was in Cayman now, I didn't know anything about Pastor Jenny, not a clue. But my mom lived in the Linstead area in St. Catherine. And at that time, Pastor Jennings were going to have convocation in Linstead. So my oldest son was staying with my mom at that time because my mom had went home for a while. And my son telling me on the phone, Mommy, I find the truth, I find the truth. But because from here, like we were church hopping and looking for truth. And quite a few times he got to church and said, you find the truth. I did not listen to him. I was like, okay. But my brother came up now from Jamaica and he went to the two bedroom house and we were living together. And that was about, that was in 2012. No, I came up 2011. In 2012, I was living with my brother. And my brother is a Rasta, you know. When we were in first church, he used to burn God, burn Jesus, Jesus and ship. And when we baptized in the sea, he said, Saul, he used to just like rebellious, mocking us, mocking us all the time. Say in my arm, wear this cocky clothes. Joe, Rasta for us, last year, all these things. <laughs> used to tell him, say, you have a serve God. All oh, yeah, go on, you have a serve God. And I remember my mom get a dream one day that he was preaching or teaching or whatever. And my mom told him the dream and he tell my mom, he said, ha, huh? that the dream then I come to. That the dream then I come to and he get all for the worst now. He started to, he have a sound, you know. So he's in the music industry. In me nine khaki suit. And when, when you go back to Jamaica and the community, is like some king. He's like some king in the community. Everybody, he turned everybody from Bali to Rasta in the community. Mm. Every day and day they are teach religion and I teach that Rasta this and we do this word by research. And everything he tells the people, then listen to him. So he went. He went in Jamaica now and, and roll over. At that time, when I was in Jamaica, my brother was here. My brother had son, whole seal, things are going to him. He just prospering, everything. And I remember when I was in Jamaica, I got a vision of my brother came to my sister's doorway, knocking her door with a cup begging sugar. 
That time, my, my brother was like one of the most successful siblings in the family. Mm -hmm. And I get a vision of my brother begging sugar. And I tell my sister that, you know, my brother got my shop. I don't mash up him, you know, because I dream he come at your door begging sugar. Another vision I got about him is that he was sick and lying down. And I was praying for him. And I hear that the Holy Spirit said, don't pray for him. Let him pray for himself. Let him pray for himself. And immediately I start praying and start trying to encourage him to pray for himself. Because he born this, born that. <laughs> so eventually, my brother went and rolled over, did mash up, did bed sugar, ended up praying to God. And he said, his testimony that he told me is that one day I was in his room, he hear this pastor on TV. And the pastor was, because my brother used to fight church like Pastor Jennings. Mm -hmm. So when he hear Pastor Jennings, Licking out on the preachers and the church and the this and the that, it gets his attention. Mm. So he started to watch Pastor Jennings now on CVM because Pastor Jennings was fighting church as he was doing. So he, he gets his attention. But he said one day, he heard Pastor Jennings start beat his religion, which is Rastafari. And when he hear Pastor Jennings mash up his religion, he said, start. And he said, say, no, man, if I find somebody, I use this religion to mash up everything. And if I find somebody that mash up this religion, I really can follow that person. And he was in a situation till he, he, he told us that he started to pray and beg God another chance. And that's when he get another permit to come. So when he come back on the island, we were living together in the same house. My brother and his wife and I, three of us were living in the same house. And I hear them not talk about this Pastor Jennings, Pastor Jennings, and they carry on. That time, we, we got back in our party life, so I didn't really mm -hmm. take up them time. Because even though I have that experience with the Lord, he still did not show me where to worship or anything. I was still going to church, but still can't find God. So at that point now, I, every day I hear she say, she got a post office, she got to get package, she got to get this package, Pastor Jennings in her package. And she got supposed she went to the post office so much time for this package and it didn't reach. Still finally it reached. When the package came now, I remember one day I see my brother sitting in the living room like this. And she was cutting off his locks. So I said, What watch her? This this look real now. I was like, oh. this really look like something I go on here. But I'm a person like this. I would just observe, but I didn't really say, 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 say. But I'm a good observer. I can't just observe. I, I, I would talk and you think I'm not. I would talk one thing and my mind is just all, you know, observing. So after that, no, the package came and they start playing Pastor Jennings, Pastor Jennings every day. Pastor Jennings, Pastor Jennings. And I remember now, by then, I was married because I got married in 2013. Yeah, I think, yeah, I was married. 2012, no, I wasn't married yet. I was dating, but wasn't married as yet. And in 2012, I remember somewhere there in October, somewhere there. Pastor Jenny was going to Manticore Bay and I hear my brother said, he's going down to get baptized. So my brother and his wife went to Jamaica to Mantico Bay and they get baptized. Come up all boomy boomy. By that time, my other brother now, the one that I told you, the lady had put the spell on. He came to Cayman now and we were living in the same place. And we decided we need a bigger apartment because we had two bedrooms. Now my brother came and we said we're gonna look at bigger space. So we start to look bigger space now. Why are we looking bigger space now? My brother buy a DVD that my younger brother know. He buy a DVD and would be riding all over the island and playing Pastor Jennings <laughs> with his DVDs. Um, I was I got into an accident and I was in some trouble to go to court and all these things. But from my experience, I always pray and God always deliver. So I was praying. And I remember in that time, I went and I take up 
some of the DVDs that they got from Pastor Jennings. And I put it in my room and I start to watch the DVDs. And then my brother find a location and we get this big three bedroom house. It was really spacious. Did not know that would be the first church in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> so we find this big house, three bedroom, and we move into it. After we move into it, you now we had just family member coming up. My mom came up. People started to come up and we started to utilize the space. My kids came up. And then at that time, my son already persuaded that he find the truth, so he wanted to baptize in truth. But my son baptized so much time already. Oh my God, he's young. But from he was yeah. a baby, he loved the Lord. He used to hide and go to church and baptize. And oh, I know he baptizes when I find the wet clothes in the plastic bag. Mm. So he always wanted to baptize and all these things. I didn't really take up much, pay much attention to him. When he was telling me he find the truth and everything, I wasn't really paying him much mind. But when I saw my brother trim and everything, I was like, this looks serious now. Let me see what my brother find now. So when I started to watch the TV for myself, watch the DVD for myself, I start listen, listen, listen. I just listen, listen. But I still have that mind because I hear so much and it wasn't the truth. I wasn't quick to say this was the truth. You know, I, I just need to observe a lot to see if this would be the truth. So when we might move now, my brother meet somebody from the Holy Temple Church and my other brother. One day, the very same day, both of my brother were at work. One was at work, one was speaking at Aki. And they meet two brothers from the Holy Temple Church that same time, that same day, telling them that this pastor Jennings that they're preaching, this church is in Cayman. So they, in, they direct my brother to where the church was and said that the, the same church is in Cayman because my brother done convinced and told them he searched the island and he can't find this teaching. So the Holy Temple, that same day, two, this is really something, this mm -hmm. same day, two brothers from the same organization convinced my two brothers. When my two brothers come together to share the information, it was the same church they end up. So when my brother went to the Holy Temple Church now, first thing he see, Acts 2.38. So he decided he wanted to baptize. And he baptized in the Holy Temple Church. They start going to the Holy Temple Church because they said the Holy Temple Church was the same thing as Pastor Jennings Church. So we, they start going to Pastor Jen to the Holy Temple Church. I'd be home cooking. I wasn't really going, going to church. Until I remember one day, um, my two children, my son decided he, he wanted to get baptized and my other son. So after my, no, when my brother baptized, when my brother went and see Acts 2, 38, he testified in the church and said he wanted to get water baptized. That's my younger brother that followed me. My older brother that was Rasta, he already went to Jamaica and Montego Bay and were baptized with his wife. So when my brother announced that he wanted to baptize now, that very same day, the, the pastor was preaching. And that same day, my brother that was baptized in Montego Bay, got filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay. So both of them get baptized the same day, one in water, one in spirit. Mm. So they get, so my older brother got back filled with the Holy Ghost that baptized in truth. And my younger brother got his water baptism. After that, my nephew and my son, they decided they wanted to baptize. So I said, I want to go and witness their baptism. So I went to witness their baptism. But also, some things were going on in the church where there was discrimination against my brother by another man that said he was an elder because he singled my brother that they are pastor Jennings people and they're coming to take over the church. So that elder was making conflict with my brother. And because when they come from church, they will talk about everything that happened at church. Mm. So by then I was already married and my husband used to say they would have church after church. Because <laughs> <laughs> he would be in the room and he would, be, he, he would listen to all the conversation that they come from church and they'll be having this conversation. At times, he would join in and tell them that um, 
We don't believe in this. We don't believe in that. Same thing that Pastor Jennings believes. This is how my granny tell me. This is how I raised. And I always tell them, it's more than 66 books. My grandmother has a Bible and he's joining. And they always have church and about church. And I always say to myself, but why is this, this elder keep picking on my brother? Hmm. So I'm like the police in the family, the defense. Hmm. So I said, I'm going to go to church and see what this elder is about. Because since they are Christian, they can deal with this elder. I have to let this elder know and say, I will let him know that. Listen to me. This is my family. My husband, let him know. No disrespect. Because at one point, like my brother at the mic, were talking, the, the, the pastor that, it, that they live in charge of this organization asked my brother must be exalt or something. When my brother start talking, I hear this elder get up and take the mic from my brother. I'm not behaving so dramatic and rude in the church. So I decided to pay this man a visit, man. So I get ready and went to church to pay this man a visit. Not even thinking about the Holy Ghost. But when I reached the church, my brother they start worship. The anointing come in the church and I was all in the spirit, Holy mm -hmm. Ghost. Because I was already filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So I did a better to fulfill the mission that I went on to deal with that elder because God changed the whole plan. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's why I say I could never be a security in first church because especially if I was in Jamaica first song they, they, they'd fire me <laughs> the security stay focused and looking around mm -mm, when a Sunday would have been fired after the first song okay <laughs> so, I was there you now and I witnessed my brother and my my son and my nephew um, in the night, they were get support. They, I know they're going to get baptized. So I, I went to witness the baptism in the night now. So when time for baptism, I see they, they went around that place, around a corner to get dressed. But I don't see them come in. So I decided to go look if they change their mind because we've been waiting a while. Like we at the wedding, waiting on the bride. So when I went around there, I saw the two of them on their knees praying. And when I saw that, it did something to me. It did something to me like, oh my God, like this is marvelous. This is the part where I realized, let your light so shine. We are going to get the glory. Because that moment when I saw the two young men praying, it did, that time I saw only probably some 15 or 16 teenager. And it let me feel like I should be the one doing this. And these young men is doing this, is honoring God like this. It did something to me. And then eventually I asked them what they were doing and they would say, we were repenting. Because of course, you know, they're watching the pastor journey, so they're doing everything. And I said, okay, and they came and they get baptized. From that time, now we start, I start going to church with them. And I remember I was watching this specific tape I always say I was watching this specific day. And it, I don't remember the number, but I remember the, at the end of the preaching, Pastor Jenny was singing this song, Let God Arise and the Enemy Be Scattered. And I mean, that was when my eyes were open. That was when I was really seen. Because all the time I was watching, I was seen. And that was the time I started to observe the congregation, their adornment. Because even though I, I was going to church, I believe in pants, falls here. I did, I did a granddad thing because even though my father was really a true man of God, he had certain principle like that. No pants, no. Now, he was still in jail, we couldn't put in our ear. So that standard, I grew up in and I believe that. So when I observe the congregation and see the appearance of the bridging, when I see the anointing moving, and when I see everything, I mean, I have to back up that DVD buff four times or more and rewatch it, that same one. And I remember the message that Pastor Jennings Pete said, where you want to be? Like Lady Gugu. You might even say Lady Gaga because you know Lady Gaga said, like, why you want to be like Lady Gugu? You didn't call it well. Huh? Why you don't want to be like Jesus? Why you want to look like a whore? Why? What is wrong with looking like Jesus? Why you don't? And that was the moment I said to myself, no man, because I was really following up the fashion, the hip hop industry, the Hollywood. And I was like, oh my God. I said, why 
don't I want to be like Jesus? And I watched that tape and I said, this is it. This is it. And when pastor started to sing this song, let God arise and the enemy be scattered. That was when I experienced that same moment. When I told you the figure as a, like a man in a gun came out of the TV. That when, while I was watching that um, program, that was when I experienced that again. And that was the sign that let me know, this is the place. This is the place. Because at that time, I did not see a figure came out of the TV like what I dreamt. But at that time, that same present came into my room, the same atmosphere, that same happiness, contentment, that peace, I experienced that. And that was the first sign that let me know this is where I want to be. This is where God is taking me. And I remember talking to my, my son and I said, I got baptized and I don't already yet know but I got baptized. And at that time my two sons already baptized. And I remember my son, my oldest son said to me, oh, mommy, you always say you can baptize, you can serve God. But do you know when you're gonna die? Mm. And that saying pricked my heart. And I said to him, you know, I can baptize when they come in. But I said, don't tell anyone. Because I was saying to myself, you know, I might change my mind by then. <laughs> and same time I started to look in my closet, look at everything because I said, all these I got. Just looking at everything that I have to get rid of. And when I look in my closet, because I love clothes and fashion, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That time I only have like one or two attire that could wear to church. But when I decided to serve, to get baptized and I went, I went to the Holy Temple and we get baptized. We we're all in the Holy Temple, but we were under the umbrella of the first church. So when we get up in the Holy Temple, we would do like honor to Pastor Jennings and all these things. And it would let some of the virgin mud because I didn't know that Pastor was so popular and that even the elder were watching Pastor Jennings. So they keep saying we were Pastor Jennings people coming to steal the church from Pastor Jennings. But the elder that was there, Elder Green, he gave us the belief that they and Pastor were one, were like mm. in some. So they were, they were pretty much making, so going to that Holy Temple Church, they were making it seem as though this was first church in, in the Cayman Islands. Right, like their bishop, Bishop Samuel and them one in the States that usually come were like associated as Pastor Gina Jennings. Bishop Samuel from the States? Yeah, the, the bishop for the Holy Temple. I think it oh, was Bishop okay. and another bishop. They were the, the, the bishop for the Holy Temple, that okay. in charge of the Holy Temple. Okay. So, of course... When we start going to the Holy Temple, the, the, the church were like stagnant. Nobody coming, nobody baptized, just few people. Mm -hmm. When we start to go, people start coming. So they hear about this. You know, false prophet want to know who's coming because more people come, more money, you know? Mm -hmm. So they, they, and then my brother were like working with them, giving them things, fixing, you know? So when the bishop heard about us, he actually came to Cayman to meet to meet my brother and to meet us. Because by that time, plenty of people were attending the church. People were being baptized because quite a few of us end up being baptized at the Holy Temple Church because they have the Acts 238 mm -hmm. that we learn in first church. But, and they said they don't believe in women, this woman that but they have missionary in the church and they have missionary Sunday. So at one point, they have this thing called missionary Sunday. And we were in the church and we see the missionary get up and my brother, just my brother, because he was like our leader, my brother just get up and be like, come on. And we, we know this and when my brother move, we know we move, you know. So when my brother move, we move and all of us leave the church and went because we are aware of the woman preaching and they said they are the same thing. They don't believe in woman preaching, but they have these missionary, they're saying the missionary don't preach, but they let them leave the service. 
So my brother walk out of the church as they go, said they're going to leave service. We gone. Hmm. My brother make the sign and we know we gone. We gone. So we leave. So after a while, God bless us that Minister Gary came on Island. When Minister Gary came on Island, we thought we were going to have church at the Holy Temple and they're going to let Minister Gary preach. However, when we when my brother take Minister Gary to meet Elder Green, there were acquaintance living in, from the same district in Jamaica. Hmm. So they know each other. Hmm. So after dialogue and dialogue, Minister, it's like he was saying he's anti the church run under different management. He can't do nothing like that. So Minister Gary said to us, we gotta have church, invite people. We don't, we, we gotta have church. So we start to invite people to our home now. We get chairs and everything. And I remember, cause Minister Gary came on a Saturday. And brother, I remember he came, Minister Gary and Brother Michael came on a Saturday. Our church and Trinidad, Bert and the same, well, um, were, they made that same trip. So I would say, our church in Cayman and the branch in Trinidad start the same time. Because Minister Gary went to Trinidad, preached to Trinidad for probably the first time, and then come to Cayman for the first time and preached to Cayman. So we had church in our, in our house. I have all those pictures now. We had the door open. Minister Gary preaching. The stove was there, my sister cooking. And the, the door open and people all the way down to the step. The door could not close. People all the way down to the step. Mm. And Minister Gary preached. And I remember Minister Gary said, who is on the Lord's side? And seven of us, who, with my mom, my mom, my sister, my two brother, my brother wife, which is my sister-in-law, and me, six, because by that time, the children already went back home. And a close friend of us, seven. Seven of us came and said, we are on the Lord's side. The other brethren leave me. Here we pray, pray church, um, dismiss, and he talk. And he tell us that he cannot um, encourage us to go back to the Holy Temple. Because that's when he's revealing the world you now. Mm -hmm. And because my brother just got the Holy Ghost you now. Minister Gary tell him that he should stay in the house and encourage us and watch the DVD. He must like have praise and mm -hmm. we start to have service in the house. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, Minister Gary would come, but not too often. And we've been there, I've been church in the house for a while till neighbors start complaining and we end up getting noticed, <laughs> scattered abroad. But what we did, like, in the nights, like on weekend, like Saturday night, my mom and my brother, they we have to scatter. I went, me and my husband lived different location. Everybody lived different location. <laughs> so at that time now, my mom and my brother and his wife, they rent a nice little studio place. So what we used to do on Saturday night now, we, we would go up by where my brother is and we would have all night prayer meeting. We would pray to God to provide a place for us to worship. And we would have all night prayer meeting until my brother landlord tell him that we could have church there where he was staying. And he also provide a room and said that when Minister Gary come, he can stay in that room. Mm -hmm. And then Minister Gary said, okay, we will pay him X, Y, Z because he allows us. So we start to have church in Prospect again. We were faithful. We dress up even before we move. We, we put on our church clothes. We go to church. We pay our tithes, our offering. And my brother would have the testimony, the whatever, whatever. Then we watch a DVD and stuff. So moving from there now, we keep praying and praying. Because Minister Gary said, must pray to get a place because some people, will not settle to see to come to a house, a church in the house, because people like this modernized traditional things. So Minister Gary used the scripture to show us that in the scripture there were us in church. Church kept in, in people's house, but other people like will not fit, you know, because they're they're used to this big organization mm -hmm. to come to a little church. They're not going. So we pray, we pray, 
And then my sister was working somewhere and my sister find a place. My sister called call Brother O'Neill and tell him. Then we called Minister Gary and we start moving together because we had some little funds because we had been paying tides on our free and stuff like that. So Minister Gary and Brother O'Neill move, start to dialogue with the landlord and we get a little place on Shadow Road. So we start to have church now in a place that look like church, but not really a church. So we there at Shadow Road. 2016, and then I remember in 2016, at that time I was married. I already have two sons, but my husband did not get any. Um, my husband had no child, no children. And then I was praying to God that I want to have a child now in wedlock and to um, give my husband a child. So. We were married from 2013. And I pray, pray, pray. But God answer prayer in the right time. When I was um after God helped us to get to our own house, you know, I remember going when this when we were worshiping at Shadow Road, every lunchtime, you would go to that place and when you open it, you always see somebody praying. All of us by that time. Plenty of our friends and close associates baptized and was a part of the truth. And the work started to grow. When we go to Shadow Road, get that first building, the work start to grow. Because, you know, we have friends and family and we're telling people and people come and we invite people and people mm. being baptized. So that the, the work started to grow. So at that time, we would go to church. We would go to, when we get lunchtime, all of us, because Cayman is small. Mm -hmm. Came and it's small, and where we were, we could just ride or drive close distance. So every lunchtime, we would go in the temple to pray. And when you go in that temple to pray, you never go there and you're alone. You always go there and see somebody praying. Mm. By the time you leave, somebody is coming in. <laughs> so that place was what we call that place of prayer. Mm. In the evening, when people leave work, they go there again to pray. So when you leave work, you go there, you see somebody praying. Wonder. When you leave in somebody else coming to pray, that place Wonder. was the place of prayer. Wonder. And I remember at times I would be like, leave work because we used to have key. Most of us used to have key for the church because just a few of us. And I remember I would leave church, be on fasting, and I would leave church. I remember one night I leave work about 11 o'clock because I was a cashier. At that time, I was a cashier in a supermarket because right when I was supposed to enter my career as a sales representative, my ambition was to work in the free port to sell jewelry because Cayman is known for jewelry. Mm. And Cayman jewelry, jewelry is very expensive and we have a lot of cruise ship people come in and when they come, they come to buy jewelry. So... I, my ambition was to work as a sales representative in the jewel free um tourism era because I would make plenty of money because they get set pay plus um commission. And the jewel era is so expensive, about eight thousand for a little piece or something. And you know, CI dollars is more than the US. Mm -hmm. It's one hundred and it is like eighty cents CI to one dollar US. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go in that industry. And that was when the truth interrupted my life. I could not accept my job. And I ended up taking another job as a cashier. But God rewarded me for my faithfulness. So I was a cashier at that time because I had to change my whole career for truth. <laughs> so I was there. Praying to the Lord to get a child and whatever, whatever. And I remember one night I leave church. I leave work about 11 o'clock and I was on fasting. And I I did not, I went to church to pray. I was on the night shift. And when I went in the church, it was me alone and the Lord. And I lay down and I pray. And I tell, give God every reason why he should give me a child. I give him every reason why he should give me a child. And 
shortly after that, prior, I discovered that I was pregnant. I told the Lord, I want to have the child on my anniversary. That was my prayer to the Lord. I want this baby to born on my anniversary. Mm. <laughs> so, Miss, at that time, we were praying for Pastor Jennings to come to the Cayman Islands. Praying for Pastor Jennings. One minute. Right. And we were praying for Pastor Jennings to come to the Cayman Islands. So, right there and then, Minister Gary announced that Pastor Jennings will be coming to the Cayman Islands. And when he gave us the date, I was like, no, Minister, he can't come that time. <laughs> minister was like, why? But but at that time, I had changed job and get another job. Mm -hmm. I was working now in an office. Nice, comfortable. Yeah, I forget to give you that part. That after I take the lowest job, after I abandoned my career and my desire, and God gave me a job at the supermarket, it was at that supermarket that God blessed me with a new car, blessed me with my house, mm -hmm. and so much other things. At that lowest job, at the minimum wage, because those salary, what, what you call the minimum wage salary. Mm -hmm. But God kept me right there and showed me that it's not your salary, it's me. So it's not like the type of job you're in, it's all God can bless you. And I, before I get pregnant, I pray to God for us as well on the island because at that time, me and my husband and I were renting. And God worked it that I have my own home. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So within that time, I got my US visa. Mm. I got my new, my new car. I got new job, mm. big promotion. <laughs> I was working as a, I was actually managing the premix company. It is more, it's a franchise in the Cayman Islands, but it's more popular in Miami. The headquarters in Miami is called Supermix. Supermix. So I worked there for five years. Yes. So God blessed me with everything. He gave me house. He gave me my US visa. He gave me new car. He gave me my my baby <laughs> so at that time now i heard pastor jennings was coming and i was disappointed because like it's right in may i was like pastor jennings can't come in may so me so again i said what it's your time because that time you know i said that's my time so minister gary said well can't do nothing about it <laughs> so, <laughs> so and that was a little um, fun, fun moment between me and Minister Gary because both of us were watching all this darn work out now. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I put it in the first, in the church group and said, um, I remember I went back to God and I said, Lord, hold the baby. Don't <laughs> let the baby come. <laughs> because my anniversary, my anniversary date, date is the 24th of May and Pastor Jennings was scheduled to come the to come the 26th or the 27th of May. So Pastor, Pastor Jennings would come the weekend right in the time would be the service when I would have baby and my anniversary in the week. So I say, Lord, hold the baby. Don't let the baby come. I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so when, it, when I was done in May now, Everything was about candle, candle, up, up and bubbling. And because I prayed and asked God to hold the baby, I wasn't thinking about the baby coming now. I'm more thinking about getting my clothes for candle. I was thinking about candle and preparing for candle. And I remember that same Wednesday, my sister get me a dress. And I, and try on the dress on me. And I said, oh my God, they were saying, Real, you must wear white for candle, white. I remember my sister got me that white dress. And when I text in the group and said, yes, few more days to go. Look like I'm going to make it. <laughs> you know? And so that means that here we just send a little, a little, I can just smile and I mm. see a little thing, you know? And I mean, it was just a big joke. Funny to know that 
that Wednesday on my anniversary, on my anniversary, me and my husband were out up and down. It was, I remember it was election day. And and he went to vote and we were just enjoying the day. I feel a little cramp and so, but I always be saying that might be fake, can fake signs. Mm -hmm. And that night on my anniversary, by 9.30, my little boy was born. Oh. When know. we texted the group that the little boy was born, I remember me to Gary said, man, I was listening to hear that Sister Prudent was in the hospital. Not that she had a baby. My baby born the Wednesday on my anniversary. Pastor Jennings came to Cayman. I think he came the Friday. My brother went to pick him up. Man, I felt so alone. When I was just in my bed with my baby lying down, the group were, nobody say nothing in the group. Everybody were all excited. <laughs> Pastor Jennings come for the first time. <laughs> Everybody were walking on cloud. I felt so left out. <laughs> I remember one time I texted the group and said, somebody can't, like I was texting the group and say, like somebody can send something, send a message, send something. <laughs> Nobody had no time for the group. Everybody was just, and I remember after the first convo, my family came and looked for me and they called me and they were telling me, a oh, minister gave what testifying about me, that there was a sister. <laughs> Did you get to make it? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that was something. And God so have it to be that the Holy Temple Church fall apart and was abandoned. And after Pastor Jennings came, the church get a bit tight, rode the place where we was and we were looking somewhere else. And then we get a call that the Holy Temple was um, available for renting. Because what happened, the bishop actually sold the church with the people in it. And he didn't tell the did he tell the people? He didn't tell the people. What what I heard was that the church was sold, and it was after it said that the people were informed that they have to leave by such a time. Because even when we get the church, there were still drums and stings in there for mm -hmm. the people. Because when they leave, it was so short that they did not get to bring their stuff. The, the, some of the instrument was there. And they sell it, they sold it to somebody, and we rent it from that person. So we are actually worshiping now in the holy temple, the same church that we were baptizing, even though we baptized over. Because at one point, Minister Baker came, and I was the first one to testify that I want to get my baptism in two, because I said I've given back everything. I want everything fresh. Even the Holy Ghost, I said, Lord, I give him back everything. I want everything to be certified. Because now I'm getting the teaching about the Holy Ghost. I'm getting the teaching about repentance and baptism. I said, I want everything to be right. So I get up and testify that I want to read through my baptism. And all of my family, all of us that was in the Holy Temple Church, that they baptized over. So we were rebaptized. And then, thanks be to God. One sister that was with us, she's not with us anymore. She had testified. And, and she said, God going to take away this church from them and give it to Pastor Jenny. Is that what she said? And we are at that church right now. We are worshiping. I remember when we get the church and I heard, um, we just take off the holy temple sign and put on first church sign. <laughs> and some of the members that was with us, in the old temple that we met there, mm -hmm. they are with us now in two. Wonderful. So that's where we are. Wow. 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 What a testimony. I mean, uh, dance hard, kidnapped, and uh, uh, Obia. And for those of you that don't know what Obia is, it's um, how they say it in Jamaica, it's voodoo uh, or black magic or um, juju. Uh, for some of you that know it, but in Jamaica, they call mm -hmm. it Obia in that sense. And it, it just, it, you know, it, it just, it shows you how grateful we are to be to God because despite whatever state you could have been in or were in, uh, yeah. somebody trying to do Obia against you, you and you just don't know where in truth now, it, it makes you wonder. <laughs> you don't know who's trying to do it against you, but 
Once you mm-hmm. have God surrounding thee and protecting thee, and now that thing just goes right back and and gets it. That's why we have to be in constant prayer and, yes. and fasting in this thing, man. It's 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 no joke, you know. And to think that you know within your the dreams you're having and your vexation is what really drove you to leave. And yeah, if you es- escape trauma right there. You know, you escape being raped. You know, so sorry for mm-hmm. you know the friend that had to go through that, but. It, mm-hmm. It's just so crazy. But even despite that, you were in a backsliding state. You were in, we never deserve anything from God. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. We never deserve anything. But now you put yourself in a position where it's it's like, why should he answer to you? Why should he, you know, but to escape that, here it is now you were kidnapped with the zip. And as you're saying that, it's Sorry. like, you, you know, you see, you watch documentaries, you watch stories, and to actually have someone really in that position in the bush and now it's like it's life or death and you choose okay you know what let's and for God to still have mercy on you and uh, another crazy thing is here it is your own brother Rastafari Yaman Yaman Rastafari all that stuff was the one that through him you're able to come and 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 in this way of of it's 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 crazy it's crazy it, it, and it just goes to show you that you need a strong message because Rastafari is a strong thing, you know. Rast, oh my Rastafari, they 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 stay full force, and a lot of them, you know, they respect, you know, uh, Pastor Jennings. They they say he's a man of principle, but they don't cut the dreads. They don't cut. So for your for your brother, you know, to go through that, and that's the one who had to go through all that he had to go through, and now it's through him. And, you know, the other thing as well, what's crazy is, and, and it makes you wonder, are other places in islands or other countries trying to do this? Well, yeah, we're associated with, you know, First Church and, you know, just to bring you in, just to have you come in. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, you start to see the reality, you know, but um, well, thank God so much for your testimony, sis. It, it's that that's something, you know, that's something to go through all that. And, um, you know, to you were seeking, couldn't find what you're looking for back in the world. Seeking, you couldn't find what you're looking for back into the world. And back into the world. And, you know, it, it's just a blessing that God was able to keep you through it all, sis. And, you know, be, before we uh, conclude mm-hmm. and stuff, just one, uh, with this question, you know, for those, because... You know, party in Jamaica, Jamaicans, look, those of you watching, look, it's not no American <laughs> stuff where, you know, you're going and, you know, or in the club doing, listen, J- Jamaicans, you don't know what type of party in they do. I'm talking about jumping from building and going down and all. It's a whole different scenery. And, you know, those that know J- Jamaican uh, the dance hall and all that type of stuff. It's, it's oh, it's a thing that make you know what I mean, man. You know what I mean. So, sis, for you were in that lifestyle, and mm-hmm. there's so many wrapped up in that lifestyle today. What would you? What message would you give to them right now if they were listening, you know, or watching, you know, the one that's in that environment, in you know the 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 you know the music and the uh, 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 reggae and dance hall and stuff and you know they don't see fit that hey i can't see myself in church this is my life this is what i'm going to do i'm born to do this and i'm gonna die doing this what would you tell uh someone like that watching right now right sometimes um when i saw see some of my friends that know me back then who i was and they they're like my true testimony (laughs) Because um, they always look at me and they always said, if prudence can't change, anybody can't change. <laughs> oh, pr- pr- prudence, pr- prudence must have been a wild beast back in that time, man. <laughs> because one thing with me, no. I was what people say, facey. I, I don't fear people. I don't have no fear. I'm just upfront. I just do me, do what I want to do. I don't care about people. And if you put it to me, I put it to you. I was that type of person. I don't back. I don't fear. I just let you know what it is. I don't be hypocritic. Don't beat around the bush. 
I'll be just straightforward. So people be like, and they always say, I'm miserable. I always say, oh, I'm miserable. If I'm not happy about that thing, you're going to know I'm not. Yeah. No, it's, it's um, honestly, it's, it's a blessing, as I say, moreover. Um, for you to just be in that realm and to see mm -hmm. uh, the growth, you know, within getting out that lifestyle because it's a it's a stronghold. It is, it is. That that thing, it's like it, it's a it's a especially like country because you have some places that's literally all the they they could do, like nothing much more for them around of what they want to do. So are they gonna say, "Oh, let me just party"? It's like one chooses to play football or cricket or whatever. You have some. <laughs> That's really what they base their life around. Not even just in the island, yep. in Canada and US as well. That's mm -hmm. literally all they do. You have right. people they just work for that weekend, you know, going to the bar, going to the club, going just to do it <laughs> over and over and over. So, you know, truly give God thanks for bringing you out such a stronghold lifestyle. And the last question before we conclude, sis, when you look, when you look around and see, when you look all the way back, my ideas. For all that God has done for thee, how grateful are you to God for a person? I'm very, I'm very grateful. You know, um, that lifestyle is not only like going to the party. You have to invest in yourself, mm -hmm. your beauty, your fashion. You know, you have to go out there, present yourself. And um, truth has really teach me. I realized at that point what the world did was it lets you hate yourself. It hates, I hate my true version of who I am. I hated my ear. I hated my appearance. And it's like you want to create yourself into being an all different person. And that is one of the problems with society. We are not comfortable with who we are. And we try to change. And even though we change the outside, inside is a whole different thing. And you cannot change the inside. You only God alone can change the inside. And it really takes God. It takes God to come into a person's life when they're at that level to really show them a new version of life. And the new version of life that God showed me was who he is. And when I see how pure God is, how true he is, how faithful he is, Oh, honorably, is a person I can trust. It's the only person I can say I have my back. You know, no matter what I'm doing, when God, when God say do that, I know. You know, sometimes you're getting advice from people. You don't know who is going to benefit. But when God give you advice, advice and something and say, go and repent. Go and um, forgive. At the end of the day, you know it's going to benefit you. Because the only person that need benefiting from what God is telling you to do is you. God don't need no benefit. So it's a situation where I can trust the counsel of God. I can trust God's word. I can trust the teaching that the God is presenting by the apostle. And I can spend time with God. I can enjoy God. I can enjoy being alone with God. You know, one time, I used to be in so much company. I so always have people around me feel like when I'm alone, like, like I'm scared or, you know, but no, I enjoy being alone because I know I'm with somebody. I'm with the Lord. And this is the best moment to be with the Lord when I'm alone. You know, it has contributed so much more than just say baptized and serving God. It's how you develop yourself in God mm -hmm. or you develop yourself in community, in being you know, you're not a new saint to society. You were just living and it, 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 it was like nothing to community. You don't contribute nothing. You just live, eat, dance, party, sleep. But no, I can give my service to community. I can try to be a better person. I can try to... um, The money that I would invest in beauty and waste, I can turn that into a little business where I can offer employment to somebody where somebody can get a paycheck. And I find that it is useful. Serving God is useful for the community. It's useful for your household. It's, it, it's, it's so much part to develop even into your success. Even into your success. Because I remember when I was working nine to five, you know, 
And I have my US visa and many times I wanted to go to convocation and because of my employment, I'd be restricted. And I talked to God and I said, Lord, I don't want to be a member of the truth. I want to be a follower of the truth. I don't want to be here in the Cayman Islands and just like say, I'm a part of the truth. I just go to, I don't, yes. So I said, Lord, I don't want to be a member of the truth by just going to 50, 59 Seymour Drive and just say I'm a part of the truth. I want to be involved. When I watched the DVD, I said, I want to be there. I want to be in that. I want to be a part of the vision. I want to contribute. I want to make sacrifice. I want to give my part of the work because in my sense, I would say I come in late, so I'm catching up. <laughs> <laughs> because I come in truth when I'm like 35. Mm -hmm. So that's like, I'm in truth like 10 years now. And I said, Lord, I want to catch up. I want to give my heart to truth. And I, being in employment was restricted. Even though I have an American visa, I could go. But because of my employment and always short of stuff, I was not able to travel. And I remember 2019 was the first time that I actually traveled to Philadelphia, the first Holy Convocation. Wonderful. And after that time, I tell God that, you know, I'm going to travel to the Holy Convocation. I wanted to be in the truth, not just say I'm a part of the truth, not just leave my home to go to my local temple. I want to be involved in the work. And this is the first time I'm on a choir. I've never been on a choir because I don't consider myself can sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't consider myself a singer, but it is a privilege and an honor to be a part of something. And I said, God, I came in truth at age 35 and I want to give everything. I want to be a part in every, everywhere that there is a place for me to invest or to be a part of it i want to be a part of it and i said lord i don't want to be in this job anymore i need my own business because this job will i'm not making enough money to facilitate my trips um and i always call said the employment here is so hostile and so hard and harsh and I said, Lord, I want to serve you with a free mind, with a free heart. And I, I say, Lord, help me to get a business, Lord. I need my own business that I can travel, that I can facilitate and contribute and help. And the Lord has opened ways for me that I am self-employed of my own business. And I strive to be faithful to God. Sometimes my flesh wants to pull back and say, okay, this convocation, I don't have Yes, and sometimes, sometimes my flesh will be pulling back and said, um, don't go to convocation this time. You go that time, you go that time. But then I be like, don't be double minded. I remember when I tell God that I want a business that I'll be able to go with the truth, contribute and be a part of the truth. I want the truth to be a, my life. I want to be the truth, the truth in me. Not with my mouth, but with my presence, with my contribution, with my everything. And I tell you, all you need is a desire. I just, you know, I remember this spirit that say, don't be double-minded. You want to go to Convo, you don't want to go to Convo. Don't be double-minded. Don't say you're going, then say you're not going. And many times, financially, I'm not there. But all I, all I have is the desire. I say, Lord, I'm going to do this, and you do that. I say, sometimes I say, Lord, I do my part. I step out by faith and buy my ticket. And I say, Lord, you know what else I need? I have my hotel to pay. I need a little money in my pocket. And the Lord, make it happen. So if you want to go to convocation, don't look and say you don't have the money. Just say, Lord, I'm doing everything in my power to go. God knows how much money you need to go. You know how much you have. And every time I'm going to convocation, God always allow me to get some funds out of my normal income. So I could facilitate that trip. All the time. Is something gonna happen? Is either some insurance gonna pay me some extra money, but some money gonna pop up from somewhere, and I don't even have to go in my regular budget. 
to to get money to go to convocation. So I keep going. Wonderful. And I keep going. I encourage people, go to convocation. You're investing in your soul. I believe a lot of my growth today is because of the convocation I attend. I associate mis- myself with other people. I learn from other people. I put everything together and I'm building a spiritual fence, a spiritual motivated, you know, to keep going and keep going. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I love it. I look forward to the convocation. You know, I'm giving God thanks for my kids. They have been in truth before me. I have two sons. My oldest son is now 25 years old and my second son is 23. And I have my little prior baby who is six years old now. And my boys are really active in church. They love church. Wonderful. If I'm not going to church, they're going. And if I'm late, they're going to leave me because they have their own transportation. Mm -hmm. And I thank God. You know, my children, for many parents, their children are like, have degrees and successful educationally. I always tell God, I'm not really too concerned about my children's education because in myself, I'm going to have my own business and they have a secure, they, they have a secure income, they have a secure inheritance because I'm going to leave something for them to work with. But I want my children to have an heavenly inheritance. I cannot give them that. I cannot give them an heavenly inheritance. I can't give them that. And I would say to parents that have children that is not in truth, don't give up on them. Pray for them. Trust God. Live a life to show them. It don't make no sense you have a sin a child and you're doing things contrary to the doctrine and then you're cussing that your child is not in truth. You have to show them by your lifestyle. You have to show them with your words and you have to pray for them. You have to pray for them because if I have a mom that is going to truth and she's not living up to what she said she is a Christian, she can't convince me to be a Christian and then she's going to curse my lifestyle. That's no motivation. But if I have a mom that is praying, fasting, striving, and I'm a sinner, and she's encouraging me, and she's praying for me. At some point, I'm going to want to change. I'm going to want to follow her footsteps. So I encourage parents, don't give up on your children. Pray for them. I remember in time, my son backslide, and I prayed for my son. I prayed for my son. I said, Lord, fill him with your Holy Ghost. Fill him with your Holy Ghost because he needs your power. And he came back in church and got filled with the Holy Ghost. And he went back out with the Holy Ghost. And I pray for him. And he's back in. And now he has to stay in because every time I see the devil come, I'll be praying for my children, watching, praying. Because, you know, sometimes you're in truth and you can't see somebody like they're sleeping. You can't see something. I would go in my closet and I would say, Satan, you're not getting him. And I would say, Lord, hold him interrupt the plan of the devil and i would pray for him you know and i keep praying for my children not only praying for them to come in yeah when i'm in church and i see my children giving god glory when i see the holy ghost in my child when i see my child active doing the duty in the church ushering it just gives me joy i feel accomplished i feel i have accomplished i really feel like i have accomplished my mission Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, North, um, you know, thank God for your children, uh, sis, and, and, you know, thank God for the youth, you know, within First Church. And that's, uh, I know that's something that has caught many's attention is the amount of youth who are encouraged and pressing and pushing to serve God the right and holy way. Um, but uh, this concludes this uh, episode of the I Thrive Podcast. Thank you all for watching and listening and tuning in. As uh, I'm truly grateful when you are able to make do. Um, stay tuned for announcements via the truth of God. Of course, uh, things are going to be coming yeah. up. 
uh you know the there's youth coming youth conference coming up march 28th to the 31st and um yeah and then of course international and so forth you can go on the truth of god.com and get uh all those updates for uh mm-hmm. you know the information to come up and so yeah. forth so mm-hmm. but thank you very much once again sis for thank tuning you. in i'm truly grateful and thankful to have you and uh lord willing see you at convocation and <laughs> that god will make will i have to make it to the islands you know personally myself one of these moments and days but lord willing i'll definitely make do to uh, uh get there and visit my extended family over there as you know i, I always tell jamaicans whenever i'm not too far you know sometimes uh, you know those of you that say when i have good patois i was at uh headquarters <laughs> and you know what one brother said brother where are you from Oh, I said, no, I'm from, no, no. What part of Jamaica are you from? <laughs> That's because the part of you come wicked, man. The part of you come good, you know, so. But that being said, brothers and sisters, thank you so much for tuning in. It's your brother, Son in the Spirit. As some of you may know me as a podcast man. God bless mm-hmm. and peace be on to you.